go now to our next uh, guest. Yes, we want to welcome uh, Jim Wallace, who is uh, a, I'm not sure if he's a, a, a still a homicide detective or a former homicide detective, but he's written a book, fascinating, Cold Case Christianity. I love the title of this book. A homicide detective investigates the claims of the Gospels. So we want to welcome Jim Wallace to the program. And uh, Jim, any particular food that you eat that <laughs> you'd like to <laughs> confess to? Confess to? I don't think I've ever had an introduction that was quite like that one. I mean, my gosh. Well, it's I well thought out. It, it's well I'm thought out, well planned. Thank you, or if I should be shocked, or I'm not sure how I should react to that. So. Probably well, all of the above. We just don't want you to hang up on us, Jim. That's basically what we're. <laughs> that's what we're hoping for here. Uh, where, well, where, where are you? Uh, uh, where do you? Where are you a uh, police investigator? Well, I still uh, work as an investigator. You know, I, I'm in this transition period right now, where I'm uh, between. Uh, full-time employment as a detective and working as a Christian case maker now with Stand to Reason, which is a ministry out here in California. Oh, so yeah. I, I'm, running, I'm running time right now between these two lives, and probably I'll always have a hand in investigations. I get asked to consult on, even a lot today on uh, cases that are in my county where they're just difficult. You know, we're having a hard time closing the case, and they'll call me in to take a look at it. So I've got two cases right now on my desktop and my computer for the flight home tomorrow. I'm in Kentucky this week, uh, and I'm going home tomorrow. I'll be reading these cases to review them for, for uh, the officers and the DA. But, yeah, so I'm still involved uh, on a daily basis with these kinds of cases. Yeah, we air your radio show on the weekend on uh, Stand to Reason Radio. That's right, oh, yeah. And so great. I get a chance to sit in for Greg once in a while. I really mm -hmm. enjoy it. Well, I'm not going to say I enjoy doing it. Honestly, that's a hard show to do because because you have to answer any kind of question that comes in, right? It's not like you get no. a, a, to pick the lane. So I want to ask you, I know you've uh, worked for uh, police departments as a detective uh, during your career, or, but, uh, you know, the private investigator TV theme made it big in the 70s, and I was always curious – uh, do those guys really exist? Are they uh, pri private eyes? Yeah, they do exist, and m much of the time there are those of us who work in law enforcement uh, professionally. We retire now. We retire pretty early in our fifties, and then you know why we do that, by the way. Uh, cops in their fifties are about as useless as you know a hundred year old. Uh, you know, it's like a hundred years of dog years. Okay, yeah. uh, <laughs> as you get older, you don't, you're not as able to jump over fences and chase bad guys as you are when you're younger. Right. But anyway, a lot of us who retire end up working uh, in some form of private investigation. You know, so. So they are out there, and they uh, are usually hired. You know, a lot of times they'll do uh, marital infidelity issues. They don't, they don't always do. It's very rare they actually get involved in criminal cases because that requires a set of resources that really you kind of lose touch with once you step out of this profession. You have to be uh, careful. Just one more question on the side. Yeah, yeah, I was wondering, if you're a private investigator, you don't have the authority that a police in, uh, detective that's has. That's right. Absolutely. I mean, you're just a private citizen out there, you yeah. know. So you can't just, you know, go break in somebody's house. I mean, or, you know, serve them with a well, search warrant. Well, you're not going to write search warrants. You're not going to have right. access to criminal labs that, uh, you know, we access now without any additional cost. I mean, these are things that are expensive if you were to do them privately, but are part of what taxpayers uh, contribute to and makes it possible for us to do criminal cases. So, yeah, it's very difficult yeah. as a private investigator. Well, let's, uh, let's turn to your book because um, this uh, – and we did want our, our folks to understand that you are – uh, have been a homicide detective and still do a lot of investigative work. And the reason why that's important is because your book is called Cold Case Christianity. It says a homicide detective investigates the claims of the Gospels. And you actually in this book uh, use some of the same kinds of uh, ideas or, uh, you know, I don't want to say theories, but at least theories of examining evidence and uh, and uh, how how you separate um, this from that and what is reliable and, you know, the, you know, the, the chain by which evidence comes to, uh, to, uh, to 